So, going to the doctor's office. And it's my doctor's appointment that I have through Medicare. And yeah, I'm gonna be a little bit early, but I'm gonna get a cup of coffee. The earlier I get there, they'll probably see me early, you know? But, um, I had a weird dream. I had a dream I was like outside a donut shop or some sort of like neighborhood restaurant, a neighborhood, you know, you could see inside of it, you know, like a storefront, but it, was, it had to do with food. At first I got there when there was like, you know, it's a dream, everything flashes quick. So there was a point where I was like outside the donut shop, like sitting on the outside tables. And there was wolves, there was like two wolves around me. At first I was a little nervous and still kind of a little hesitant to like put my arm out and pet them. It was like the first time I ever met them, you know? But they were kind of calm, they were just like, they were wolves and they were just like, like you know laying, like you know how dogs lay on the ground, all curled up, like that. That's how they were, they were just around me. Like one was like on this, like this top little, not a roof, but like a little ledge like above me and one was on the side of me but I was still kind of cautious but then it got to that point where I was like kind of getting comfortable around them I think I ended up even started petting them the wolves and and when I would pet them they would get excited like dogs but then you know not that they were playing rough but they're bigger than dogs and they were very strong and there was a moment where I like seen their teeth and stuff like they were licking me but like their mouth was so big, it made my hand seem small. They could have easily crushed it, you know? Like when somebody puts their head in an alligator. It was just, a, it was a neat dream. Like what, I'm so, these wolves? It was crazy. But then all of a sudden, like, like right away, like all of a sudden, it was like if I, within that dream, like I blinked and I opened my eyes again. And all of a sudden it was like two or three deers, like the wolves turned into deers. And they started like being, they were really aggressive. They were like more aggressive, like not aggressive in a sense, like they were gonna bite me, but they were like pushing their nose on me a lot. Like they were like, 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 like going like that, like, and um, yeah, I was like, and, and that kind of freaked me out. And then, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was an interesting dream. And then I had another dream. Um, I had another dream where I had lost a friend, you know, being young, I lost a friend by misusing my words and it was a misunderstanding and it was mistreatment, you know? And, and so it was weird because I, I felt like either I was already like on to the next life. I think I was a, a ghost on the wall. But let's pause for a second. These people are fucking nosy. But um, it was a dream where I was sitting like, I was like, you know, some adults who are homeowners, they turn their houses into like places where their friends could come and hang out. like. Like they have like a garage where they convert it into a bar, you know, or their backyard. They put like a little um, patio area. And so it was kind of like that, you know, it was kind of like, but this was the friend that I lost, you know, this was like the, the, the woman he was with at the time. This was like someone I had met through him introducing me to his woman at the time. And so I remember just being like, and my friend wasn't there. It was just like, you know, the, you know, the, um, the elders, not saying that they're old people, but they're older than me. And then I, I remember seeing that female, you know, you can say she was supposed to be a friend, but you know, as a young, a young person, I was just a bad friend. You know, I didn't know how to be a friend. You know, I had dreams and aspirations to, you know, be famous and be, be, make a name for my stuff, myself, but not really knowing how to do it either. Not really understanding how to create a brand, you know, how to brand myself, how to create.
create a monetary gain through what I was doing, the lifestyle I was living. And I was very insecure back then too, even though I may have been highly motivated. A lot of it had to do with pain and insecurity, so. Anyway, this is a weird dream. It's like a dream of redemption, you know? So, I remember I, I, I really, it was like, it wasn't supposed to be a bar. It was supposed to be someone's house, but it was as if I was like in the corner, like it was a bar. Like nobody really cared that I was there, but I was in the corner. And when, and so I remember just kind of like, like I said, I felt like I was like a ghost, you know? I felt like I wasn't, I wasn't alive or whatever. And, you know, um, all of a sudden, like, uh, so yeah, I, I, you know, it was like older people and then the, the girl, the my peer, the female that I knew through a friend of mine who, like I said, if you look back on it, I, really, I, was, I can't really say that I was, I was their friend, you know, they were, they were more equipped and more healthy minded to say that they were my friend, you know, and, um, and also it was a short period of time where, you know, strangers do nice things for strangers, you know, it doesn't mean you're a friend, you know. Um, I think friend is experience in time. There's acquaintances and there's nothing wrong with that word. Like, it's not a bad thing to be just somebody's acquaintance, you know. And, but that's what you also got to be careful who you let in your lives, you know. Especially, I mean, a lot of young people let other people in their lives that let them down and they become enemies. And people went to prison for life for that, you know. That's... That's not a good thing. That's kind of silly, you know. You don't realize it until later, like, ah, fuck. You know, I just let somebody in my life who was damaged and fucking... And I could say I was the... The culprit. I wanted to sit right there and talk, but... See all these fucking cars right here? Probably looking at me. I don't give a fuck. And, um... All these fat folks coming to the donut shop right now. And so when, when I was like sitting, like I sat like at the first chair as soon as you walk into that, whatever setting was in my dream. Like I said, there's people enjoying themselves. There was like a host. And so all of a sudden, my friend, you know, I could say, a person who considered me their friend, like I said, I'm not really much of a friend to people, you know? So I, I can't say I'm their friend, you know? at the time and you know, I was lost and full of anger and then you could have been fucking you could have been a lost female too and I would have made you my I would have needed love you know the fuck you looking at you fucking lame you were looking far away you fucking annoying as fuck so anyway that friend walked in and, and, and it wasn't like I guess they were not lovers anymore so at first you could kind of feel like, what are you doing here? Why are you here? Are you seeing my girl or, or, or like, you know what I mean? But then you kind of seem like the only people who noticed me were these two people, right? They're the only ones that noticed me. And then we had a talk. We had to talk about the cause of the loss of the relationship, you know, the, like I said, or the loss of respect for each other or them for me, you know, cause I could say in a lot of circles, people would say that I was the one at fault, you know, but that's cool. You know, there's always circumstance, you know? And so we had a talk. We actually had a talk in this dream of mine. It was, like I said, it was like, I was a ghost trying to give them closure. And it pretty much like discuss the effects that go on when somebody mistreats you or uses the wrong words against you or not doesn't spread lies but spreads an idea that people start saying oh, okay it's like if somebody calls you ugly you start asking am i ugly am i ugly am i ugly you know what i mean so not, not to be too detailed you know i still I, that's why Social media could be super dangerous, man. You gotta be careful how you use your words. And I, I, I try to tell my daughter this, watch what you say about people. 
you could be generic and say about society and the way it moves and your ideas about that but watch the words you use about people you know um not saying that this happened but i'm saying there's going to be instances where it seems like people do things for you but then they do you wrong you know to just that's why social i think this dream was meant like social media is super fucking be careful you know be careful watch how you use social media if it's not good for you know yourself you know <coughs> if you're insecure and have low self-esteem you feel like everything somebody else does is them trying to compete with you or think they're better than you and, and you get aggressive when it comes to that like you're an emotional aggressive person and you obviously have nobody else to talk to but social media like watch what you say you know and if it's already people who don't like you from the jump it is what it is but you know when it's people that are supposed to be your friends or that maybe your just time makes you distant and stuff like that watch what you say because most of the time it's not even the person that you might have you know directly involved yourself with when it comes to an argument or disrespect it's always the people around them it's always the other people you know and, and there's obviously always gonna be people who don't like you you know once you slip up it's like it's like if you got a job and then i was talking to a customer at my job like he said that his son got injured at work and then as soon as he got injured he was not really trying to he was going back to work but he was trying to milk it but they're gonna keep an eye on you right away you know you made yourself noticeable so they're gonna wait for any little slip up you know so it was a very interesting dream i actually enjoyed it i enjoy sharing it in case that individual watches this like we in, in my dream we had a conversation of like you know like it's like if you get cheated on, you're gonna have trust issues with, uh, you know, being with somebody again. It's like if somebody says mean things to you, if a friend, quote unquote, betrays you or misuses their words against you or spreads a, a lie or a rumor about you, you're gonna have mistrust towards other people. So that was a, like a conversation we had, you know? And people have victimized me as well, you know? So I wanna say that Hey, there's a little bit of unselfishness here that I'm sharing this part of my life because I've been victimized too, you know? And victim, victims hurt people, hurt other people, you know? So, yeah, it was just a very interesting dream from like wolves hanging around me, like cool. And all of a sudden they turned into deers who were like all up on me. Like if I had food in my hands and they were hungry, just trying to eat, you know? Yeah, it was very interesting. And then at the end of the dream, a little bit of closure, so peace. If you got Medi-Cal, if you got any type of insurance, especially if you have a job, use it. It looks so beautiful after it rains. It's crazy, the whole way it's going down gradually, I guess to the ocean. Or hopefully to a water treatment plant because it's a lot of good water. And then I probably go to a water treatment plant and then it gets diverged to a, a different location. But um, yeah, I got scheduled to do some blood work. The nurse, oh my goodness, man, she was she like put, she was like checking my heart with that little tool. My heart must have been beating because oh my god. She was so beautiful. She wasn't even a nurse, she was a doctor. And then um, she was married, lucky. Whoever got to be with her, lucky man. And then also, um, uh, I'm just right at the river. Put a sticker right here. People come running right here. So there's not just fucking drug addicts, there's people that, and then I do, I like to get my name out there and I do a lot of exercise, so I'm sure there's other artists like that too, so. Anyway, and then she like told me to lay down. She was pushing on like my groin area. I was like, oh my goodness. <sighs> no matter what our occupation are, we're all humans, man. We all have sexual desires and sexual tensions, you know, and attractions. 
It takes a strong man to be able to be with a beautiful woman, to be able to put up, you know, I lost a lot of women just being insecure. So, hey, he got the bike shoes on, so you know, he be going biking. I wonder who supports that guy. He looked like just like a Paisano man. Like he fucking packs his lunch and just goes on the bike trail all day. But anyway, get your blood work done, man. Peace. I have this beautiful co-worker. She's like, she has a body like beautiful. Like if she just went to the gym, she has like the foundation to be like, wow you know if she she liked to work out but she doesn't she's only 22 so she still has that youth to her you know i want to ask her did you play sports in high school but like she kind of has like i don't want to she kind of has like a long butt not really like it's not really tight you know like i said if she just worked herself out a little bit i told her the other day like, i bet you all a lot of paisano dudes at home depot love you she started laughing she looks like she will be into gangbangers like she comes from a family like that. She said her father was just a dope boy. He was never in a gang, but she grew up in a neighborhood where a lot of my family comes from in the San Gabriel Valley. And uh, I don't know, like when I first ever met her, when I first got hired onto the job, I heard her talking to my other coworker. And this coworker, he's like probably like late thirties. He's just kind of, he's a little short. He's not super short, but he's a, a Chinese dude. I told him he's like a Chinese Mexican and he just kind of started laughing a little bit and um he's really cool actually he smokes bud he gave me the edibles last time well I heard her talking to him and she was like yeah she's talking about like she would like to be with somebody and like but every time she dates somebody he ends up I don't know she's like I don't even care if they have money whenever I'm with them I want to spend money on them so I was like listening to it. Oh shit, for sure, you know? But anyway, I, there's this other like, these couple young, like there's just like a lot of youngsters on my job. And there's other one guy I was becoming really cool with. Well, with all of them, you know, I'm like older than him. So I just fuck around with him. I'd be like an older dude to him, you know? And uh, so I, uh, This is that dope ass store. So I um, so I pretty much. Anyway, so like, right there where the locker's at, it's like a small little rectangular locker space area. And I seen her and, and him. But he's this guy's like a 19 year old guy, but he's really tall. He has like you know you know the youngsters they like like that lamella ball hair. It's like curly and kind of like kind of froey. But then they have like that little fade. But, but you know, like I said, women mature more than men. So anyway, like it kind of, you know, I could kind of catch on to things quick. So it kind of seemed like they were talking because I kind of noticed them like kind of like close together and just kind of like, like, oh shit, I don't, because I usually just sit in the corner in that space and have, you know, I like to eat alone, you know, I like to not disturb anybody with my weird aggressive eye contact. So I just kind of always just kind of be in my corner over there. But then I noticed that's where they were kind of spending their time. So I was like, fuck, you know, I gotta fucking go spend it somewhere else. But I kind of seen that she was attracted to me, even from far away, she's always kind of looking. But I was already becoming cool with this youngster. And I, I don't know, I think they're not really talking anymore. So the other day she kind of like, she's like, oh, can I um, join you right here? I'm like, yeah, I'm like, fuck. Now I feel weird around that youngster now Because, you know, he's a young guy And he's probably like, fuck, I got this 22-year-old chick it's Like one of the baddies at her job, you know And I'm just more like, fuck I'd just rather kind of fuck her, you know I don't really care to be with her And You know, disrespect I don't want to make her feel like I'm Not leading anybody on But just, I would just like something casual, you know And but yeah, I'm like, fuck but Anyway this day, this day when she's like, oh, can I sit next to you? I started talking to her, you know? Cause it was kind of weird. We were just both on our phones. I was watching a video and she was like. So anyway, what did I tell her? I can't remember. Put a sticker up right here. I don't care. 
Sorry guys. We're still going. Super. So anyway, fucking I told her about like the reason why I brought this up. Oh look at this shirt, this is sick of her. So the reason why I brought it up is because uh, I told her about like America and how like you gotta be proud to be an American. Like, and she didn't really understand what I was saying. She's already, I was like, when I say this, or when somebody speaks like this, what do you think? She was already assuming, oh, that they're, I don't know, like racist or, I'm like, no, no, it's total opposite. You gotta think like, God bless America. You gotta be grateful for America. A lot of these paisanos and ch the chinos, you know, the people ch from China, from Mexico, from land countries, even Indians from India, from any other country that come over here, dude, they love America. It's American born fucking, the ones that should be saying, I am American. It's the ones, they have the idea that America is this, America is that. You know, like, I don't, don't want to do shit. Why get a job? Because America is this, America is that. Well, dude, that's, it's just kind of twisted way of thinking. You know, like if she's 22 and she's thinking like that, a lot of youngsters are thinking like that. So it's just, it's, you kind of get lost a little bit. And uh, yeah, anyway, it was just an interesting conversation. And I think that's what these rich fucks, they want you to be like that. They want you to think, hey, I get my shoes dirty, right? <laughs> <laughs> and that lady was mopping right there. You know, that's what they want you to be like, fuck America. Because they don't want you to rise, you know? Except all these other people who are literally not born here, but come here. But, like, they know, you see them wear American hats. They wear American flag hats. And they're, they're the ones thriving, you know? So, it was interesting. I told this before we smell like piss, so... Hey, brother. Huh? Hey, homie. Okay. You mad at me? You're getting too close, dog. You mad at me? There's a dollar, fool. You don't want it? Here, fool. Here. Thanks. Take it. Thanks. Here. I like him. Better, bro. My friend Andrew sent me that. It's a daily devotional. Thank you for sending me that. And it says, um, show me that my life is worth something, but also that my life is fleeting. Show me my life's end and how, how short my days are. And um, I don't know. Whatever struggles you've been through, you have a story to share with the world to help it change. Despite our feelings and emotions and our selfishness, we are nothing, nothing. I, I'm running in the street and I think the fucking world owes me something. I think the sidewalk is mine. It's so silly. Again, I have an issue buying shoes from Offer Up. So today I took the bus to go pick them up, some shoes. And, you know, I might have a little bit of money in my pocket, but I don't have money to just be buying shoes. And it's also like, what is it doing for me? It's like a thing, because when I was younger, it's like, it's weird, isn't it? Our minds are so weird. It's like, well, it's like a drug for me to get some shoes. I guess the uh, shoes I couldn't have. I don't even wear them. I don't even want them to get dirty. But, um, 
I know this guy from Instagram, he's changed his life, you know. I talked to my friend today and told him about this person. And he's an acquaintance of me really, I'm not even sure. I met him a couple times, but he comes from a background of art. You know, his mother was a drug addict and he had a rough life. And now he's like, a, he's a minister, he preaches on the sidewalks in the street. He's always inviting his old friends from the street, you know, to join his church and to get, you know, to become a Christian and believe in Jesus. And I was following him on Instagram and just kind of like seeing how on fire he is. And um, I ran into him at my job. I mentioned it before and he invited me to go watch him speak. I never went. And um, anyway, today, you know, when you're on offer up, you choose like the distance of the merchandise that's being sold on there, right? And So, you know, the area that's selling the shoes that I wanted was an area where we're both from, you know, it's local to where I stay. And I go and pick up the shoes and the guy gets out of his car and I don't know why he said this, but um, I think maybe I mentioned I was on the bus. I really don't know why this, this, this young man, he was probably like maybe late thirties, a little, maybe mid thirties, maybe even around my age, I'm not really sure. Again, this was just somebody I was picking up some shoes from, you know, doing an exchange. And he says, oh, God gave me this car. I was like, what do you mean God gave you this car? He said, yeah, God gave me this car, man. Um, I got it for free. I didn't really like look at the car. I didn't really want to em embrace in conversation, you know, just cause just how I am. And um, I was like, you go to church? Or I'm not really sure. I think I asked like, oh, cause he, he said, oh, are you gonna sell the shoes? I, know. I said, why do you sell shoes? And then he said, uh, I said, is this what you do for like a full-time job? And he's like, no, nah, I work at the church. And I said, oh, what church you, you work at? And he tells me the church that, that the acquaintance that's been asking me to go to church, that he goes to his church. And I asked him, hey, do you know this, this guy? You know, he's on fire for church and he has, he's on Instagram. And he said, it's like, I just know his street name, but he said his real name. And I was like, man, what a coincidence. You know, it's like God's trying to get me to go to church or something. And I don't know, I just don't know if I'm ready, but, and I was talking to my other buddy who I grew up with and he's been telling me he's dealing with anxiety, you know, and he sent me a couple scriptures. So and I kind of wanted to invite him to that church with me to go together. It's like a men's church, you know, and they dress up real nice and they accept everybody, you know, ex gang members, ex drug addicts, ex scandalous people, you know, and He's, he's told me he goes to church and I was happy to hear that. And then he sent me the devotional. And then my other buddy, I got a little background of that acquaintance I told you who's pretty much a minister now, working his way to be a pastor. Uh, he told me where he came from. And like I said, he, he he said he was part of the, you know, the art group I was part of. But at this time I was kind of distance. I was, you know, the cops already kind of broke us up. Some friends are still hanging out, but you know, I, I was I played a different role, so you know, and um, yeah, so I was like, God, is this, is this a coincidence? A lot of them. <laughs>